Amen. Amen. It is with honor and humility I stand before you prayerfully to impart the words that will inspire, challenge, and encourage you. I give honor to Madam President, Dr. Mary A. Smith McCall. Can we thank God for the woman of God? I give honor to the faculty and staff of JJIC. Give honor to our Bishop, Bishop Elijah Johnson from Word for Jesus Ministries and those that are graduating. We thank God for all the clergy that's present to help celebrate this tremendous time for these honor graduates. And we certainly don't want to forget about the family and friends that are here to help support. Uh, thank God for those that are here. Because God is good all the time, but we realize no one can make it by yourself. We need each other. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them I need you? And just in case you miss somebody, look at somebody else and say, I need you. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise right there. As I uh, was reflecting on this moment of impartation, I, I was thinking about this as a time and season that none of us have been in this time or this season. That being said, we will never see it again. It's a moment that has been orchestrated by the hand of God. So I was thinking and pondering, what do I say in a moment in time where we will never see it again? I was thinking that It'll be something to give like a motivational speech to those that are graduating. And I could say something about you're going to be blessed and you're going to be on hallelujah trail and walking down blessed boulevard for the rest of your life. But then you will have to pull me to the side and correct me for my mismanagement of the word of God and correct me for not handling the word of God with integrity and you could get me for spiritual male practice because it's not all going to be roses nor blessed boulevard but there will be times of trials and testings and temptations so my thought today is count the cost count the cost Yes, there were many hours of, of, of pressing through with uh, assignments and exhilarating uh, discussions and times of maybe frustration and you got yourself back together. But now that you're on the other side of it, count the cost. And we reflect in, in Luke the 14th chapter and when you get a chance, just kind of go into it and just dissect the whole chapter because it will take you out of the flesh break you down to your knees and you will cry, oh Lord, have mercy on me. In that chapter, he challenges the disciples and he tells them, count the cost before you come follow me. Many of us say that we are following Christ until the cost get too high. But he said, before you even start on the journey, count the, count the cost. So let's look at some of the things that you will experience. It's not a maybe experience. If you haven't, it's coming your way. Somebody say it's coming. Oh, it's going. Ah, oh, my God. It's a cycle of up and down and in and out, blessings and curses. And it's a cycle of joy and pain and tears and sorrow. And it's a cycle of everything's okay and what in the mm, just happened. It's a cycle. 
And we've experienced that, so that's why in this time and place, no one has time to play because it's real right now. We're down to the finish line, 10 minutes to 12, and it's very, very real. And if you don't know it's real, you better shake yourself, baby, because things are happening. And according to the Word of God, it's not going to ease up or back down, but it's going to get harder. Somebody say it's going to get harder. And even as it gets harder, we know that the Holy Ghost is going to rain down like never before. How many people are ready for the Holy Holy Ghost to ignite your soul in this hour because it's getting where we don't need God. We got to have God. It's one thing to need something. It's another thing to have got to have it. I may feel like I need another pair of shoes, but if I got 10 pair, I don't, I ain't got to have another pair of shoes. How many people have children and they, they say, mama, I need you. You say, no, you don't got to have that. But we're in a time where we got to have the power. We must have the anointing. We got to have love in our hearts. We got to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh my God, did I offend somebody with that? Time I say count the cost. So one of the costs is you will have to give up somebody or something on this journey. Everybody can't go there with you. Jesus said, well, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to give up some very personal, close, intimate friends sometimes. You may have to look at your husband and say, please come with me. But if you don't, I, I, I. you may have to tell your wife, well, honey, I, 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 I know this thing, this marriage thing. We're here together and I, I don't plan to divorce you, but don't play with my call. You're going to have to give up something. And somebody. And every round goes higher and higher. And you give up more and more. Because you're dying. Oh my. You're dying to this world. And you're dying to the things of this world. And you're dying to your personality. And your attitudes. And all these things. You're dying. How many people have ever paid a price for the anointing that's on your life? Somebody say count the cost. On this journey, you will be misunderstood, criticized, and even ostracized. Don't be surprised when you're misunderstood when you obey God. He just didn't tell them the same thing. Misunderstood. misunderstood, criticized. Do it just the way God told you to do it, just the way God told you to do it. You heard the Holy Spirit say, turn to the left and keep down the road and somebody gonna wonder why you didn't turn to the right. Ostracized, oh my God. When you wanna live holy, when you wanna do the right thing and everybody else wanna bump against the wall and they say, well, don't be around Miss." Deep, holier than thou. So they back up and they back away. The closer you get to Christ, my God, the lonelier the journey is. But I got good news for you. I got very good news for you because he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And anything you give up for him, he will multiply back to you. My God, my God. He say, I'm here for the journey if you're willing to take it with me. Somebody say, count the cost. On this journey, you will often have to deny yourself. There may be times you're going to need to turn down the plate. Everybody eating fried chicken, you, and you just had a good taste with some chicken, and the Holy Ghost say, hold up. You need to back away from that plate right now. Oh, my God. You have to, we, 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 we all have to, what, deny ourselves. But even as you deny yourself, and you pick up your cross, and then your cross is more than just a piece of fried chicken. That's with just something to put a little humor in it. But your cross 
is something that won't go up. Dennis the menace don't go away. <laughs> Anybody have to deal with Dennis the menace? The money forces operating through people to torment you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you still have to love them. And treat them right. Yeah. Somebody say count the cost. Yeah. On this journey. When you get weak, sometimes God is going to send the power of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost will fall down upon you and give you uh, a fresh anointing after you've cried all night long. Has anyone had to, oh my God. You see, the closer you get to God, the more things begin to grieve you. What makes him hurt, make you hurt. What grieves him, grieves you and there are some things so grievous it'll make you cry all night long and before the morning the crack of dawn he'll refresh your soul he'll give you that living bread and that living water you'll leave from your prayer closet with a smile on your face and they'll never know you cried all night long. You'll be persecuted because you act like nothing bothers you. And it's not that nothing bothers you. You spend a lot of time on your knees. When everything begins to bother you, that's a sign you need to drop low to your knees. Somebody say count the call. Sometimes we get we are challenged with things that bother us and we feel like we need to talk to somebody about two and a half hours about what bothered us when God is saying, count the cost. I told you this was coming. Get on your knees. Somebody say count the cost. On this journey, the signal that you are a child of God is your ability to love your enemies. The Bible clearly says it takes nothing to love those who love you. It takes nothing to give to those who give to you. But what about that one that would despitefully use you? What about that one that would talk about you like a bow-legged dog? When God say give them a gift it takes Holy Ghost to do that what about that one oh oh my God my God I, I, I oh Holy Ghost help me but this is a gentle one but it's a true one what about the one that raped your daughter it takes the Holy Ghost to pray for that person to love in spite of to love a person who does not deserve it. They know it, you know it. But how many people know that God loved us when we didn't deserve it? Come on, give God a praise. We don't deserve it. Ha! But on this journey, you're going to need to count that cost. Because it's going to happen. Your measurement. To love your enemies and to do good to those who despitefully use you. That's part of the journey. That's part of that fellowship with Christ. Somebody say count the cost. On this journey you will cry. On this journey you will laugh. On this journey you will have good times. And on this journey you will have the pain of seeing a loved one pass away. But as we count the cost, we realize we're just pilgrims passing through this barren land. That this place is not our home. Oh my God. That we're not, we're just passing through. We're just passing through. 
You'll get lonely sometimes, but you're just passing through. You're just passing through. Somebody say, count the cost. Every word that you have learned at JJIC will be tried by fire. The ability to recite a verse of scripture does not mean you got it. It doesn't even mean you, be, you, you, it, it, you believe it. It's when the test comes. When that fire comes and, and you can boldly say, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Get back the blood that's against you, devil. And something happens. You will, when, when, you're, when, when, when what you've learned in this hour, and I'm, and I'm winding up, and what you've learned in this hour is tried by fire, you won't even look like smoke. You won't smell like smoke. Passa. You won't look like nothing but the glory of God shining on you. You'll have that, that pure gold about you. You'll have a, a sweet fragrance about you because you've been in a fiery furnace and there's something that's been burned off. The attitude will change. The personality will change. Why? I've been in a fiery furnace and I've come out like gold. No one would be able to tell that you've been tried by fire. Oh my God, so much of a fire that others got burned up. But God kept you. Count the cost. Yes. There's a high cost to following Christ. But the reward of a total surrender is a great reward. To the graduating class of 2022, keep the faith. Never look back. Press on. And when the cost gets high, when the cost begin to come to a balance where you got to give up something or somebody. When the cost, when you're standing out there all by yourself. When the cost is when you've been called everything but a child of God and you're doing your very best to serve him with everything you got. When the cost Go to a level that God, I have never seen nothing like this before. I want to encourage you, the class that's graduating and stepping over into deeper waters, that when that cost gets that high, I want you to put your hands together and begin to give God a mighty praise. I want you to get ready and say, God, I thank you. Can I hear you praise the Lord? Can I hear you give God a praise? Can I give hear you give God a praise for what he's about to do? in your life. When the costs get higher, your praise go up a little higher. I can't hear you praising him right now because you got to do an advance praise. You don't know what's coming tomorrow but in advance I give you praise. In advance I say God whatever the cost, I'm going to say hallelujah. In advance I'm going to give you honor and praise. In advance God I know you got me. God bless you.